getting hella hype right now. We got some coral in the tank, baby. guys welcome back to another fish friday it is a really exciting day today because we are finally going to be adding some corals to this tank and giving it some color other than the color that's already in there because we got some dope fish most of them kind of hide so you can't really see them anyway but we're going to be adding coral to the tank finally i have been waiting and waiting you guys know we're going to make this tank freaking sick now i know what you guys are thinking no bianca no you cannot add coral with this light that's on here trust me guys i know as it is the porcopilo that's in there however you pronounce it is already kind of dying off but it's a good thing that this happened the other day I am hella hype right now because finally after weeks and weeks of searching I'm finally gonna be picking up the light for the new nano tank look at the rainbow it just knew that it was a perfect day for this light check out this bad boy right here I've been searching everywhere for you, buddy. Heck yeah. Shout out to Vincent with the light plug. We got the Kessel A80 Tuna Blue for this little nano tank, and I am super pumped about it. So without further ado, let's put the light on this bad boy and get it started. You know, this little light does do great for little fish and stuff like that, but the coral just does not thrive in this light. It is not enough. It is not enough, folks. Here we go. Woo! That thing is looking sick! That shit is so bright, and that's not even all the way up. Holy crap, what a difference. It creates like a whole little ambiance there. I bent this neck a lot to kind of give it the boop boop right over the top of the tank. The only bad side here is that this back cover doesn't fit all the way back, so I'm gonna have to cut a little notch in there, but that's problem for another day. Right now, we're just looking at how sick this thing looks. Oh, it's a little crooked. Boom! Still a little crooked. There we go. Now we're talking. Fish is tripping out right now. I, uh, I'm gonna dial it back a little bit just because they're not used to this much light. This is the most he's swam in the last two weeks. Oh, I think he's eating stuff. Turns out that I think I have little copepods pods on my glass, or at least I hope they're copepods. pods. When I brought this porcopilo over, I think they might have been in there. You can't really, oh, maybe you could see them a little bit, but not really. Check out Mr. Sexy Shrimp right on the top there. These fish that I got, let me tell you a little story about these damn fish. They don't freaking eat. Granted, I've had them for like two or three weeks now, and they're still alive, so hopefully they're eating something after the fact when I don't see them. Uh, I've tried baby brine, I've tried regular brine, I've tried frozen mysis, I've tried, I've tried baby pellets, I've tried pellets and the mysis mixed together inside of a garlic combination. And honestly, I think I've seen the Warpaint Gobi eat a piece of mysis like once, and it literally hit him like right in the lips before he grabbed it. It was absurd. I'll just drop stuff on top, and it will just pour all over him, and he won't even... He won't even acknowledge it and then he'll just a couple minutes later just turn around and like like I ain't eating that shit But other than him not eating I had the panda as I showed you guys I had his little spot back in that corner, but I was looking for him and I didn't see him for like Honestly, probably three four days. I was like, I think he I think he croaked like he must have because he hasn't popped out I've been putting food back there and nothing the other day. I was like, you know, let me sit down. I'm a little uncomfortable here Oh, that's much better. Let me take off these rocks and see if he found like a new hole. I gotta know if he's just hiding or if he's rotting away somewhere. We gotta know what's up, you know? Took off all the rocks that are removable from the from the floating rock. Nowhere to be seen. He's not in his other spot. I like blew back there a little bit. Not back there. I put the rocks back on. I looked in the back. Didn't see him anywhere. I took out the... I took out the media basket thing. Didn't see him anywhere. Finally... I took out the media basket thing again to, to flip it around and see what was like underneath it. This dude was hidden in the back of the media basket where I took out the, uh, they have like a black spongy filtration thing that comes in the tank. I took that out and I just left the filter floss. He was in that little cavity. Alive! He was alive, guys. So he got sucked in through the back of the pumps and then he was just living in there, hopefully eating stuff. I'm not really sure what he was doing. I decided to drop him right on top of the porcopilo plant. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I dropped him in on there, and he went right into it, right onto the base of it, and he's been chilling in there for a couple days now. It's really hard to see him, but you see that black thing right there? Oh, look, there he goes. He moved. That's that's the panda goby. I, I'm still not sure if he's eating, but he's still alive, and I've had him for like three weeks, so... 
you know, we just hope for the best around here. That's the story about my fish. Hey, if you guys are new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn those notifications on. The best part about having a nano tank as a secondary tank, that's being able to shop in the treasure chest whenever you want. We're gonna be picking out some coral from my main 65 gallon Red Sea Max display tank. So many options, what am I gonna do? I, j just kidding, I already know what I'm gonna do. I'm only gonna put like three or four corals in there today just because I don't wanna do too much too quick and I also don't want everything from this tank in that tank. Plus, if I put all the corals in that tank today, then you guys have nothing to come back to. So I gotta keep you coming back and wanting more. Piece number one is going to be a little tiny Duncan frag. I already fragged this a couple weeks back. It's a nice little like four-headed frag right there. Look at that guy, he's a nice one for the tank. Some decent sized heads on there. Piece number two is gonna be a piece of the jack-o'-lantern. I did just make some frags over here the other day, but I, I'm just gonna let those grow so I could sell them and make some money. The third piece we are going to get from this tank is going to be the nuclear meltdown. And the final piece of coral that we're gonna be putting from the 65 gallon reef tank into the new nano tank is going to be rainbow trolls. Let's do this. Solid pieces right there. One polyp, one polyp, one polyp. Those should be pretty easy to just break off. Let's give it a nice frag. Ha. There we go. That guy. Dang, that thing stank. That didn't go as planned. It just kind of rotted away. Not good, guys. Not good. Glued all the pieces back on. Should be good as new in no time. Oh, yeah. A little coral surgery. Nice. Off to the lab. Thanks so much for being this week's coral donor. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, fragging like zoas and stuff honestly scares the shit out of me. I never know which ones are like super duper poisonous. I know like the death pallies, like the, the basic ones, but basically I just wear gloves, I got the glasses on, and I just hope for the best. If there's anything in my display tank that you guys personally know is like super poisonous, like try not to touch it kind of thing, let me know. I, I don't think I have anything in there that's like crazy poisonous. I know the, the Zoas have some tox, you know, whatever it's called, toxicity to them, but I usually try to avoid fragging the Zoas or just touching them in general, um, as it is, you know. I cut this these uh, rainbow trolls off, I'm panicking just a little bit, just a little, I should be fine. You know we're gonna have to just, actually, let me, let me, let me just make, ah, woo, look at that light though. Come on now. I don't want to move that right now because the panda's in there. So I'm just going to leave him be. And I'm going to put the Duncan on this side. One, two, three, a four, four-headed piece right there. That's nice. Oh, I didn't think that through. Shit. I got to cut the stump of this. First legit piece of coral in the tank. I couldn't cut the rock off, so instead we're just going to blend it in with the rest of the rocks. These are kind of green. So I'll do the orange there and the green there. Woo! We got some coral in the tank, baby. Every time I turn the pump off, the uh, starfish just wants to escape for some reason. I don't know why. Hehe, <laughs> you little strange little guy. That cute little panda down there. Light is on, corals are in. I know it's not too crazy right now, but trust me guys, just believe this is going to be good once they start growing out. It's kind of like at that ugly stage where things usually look a little bit like bleh and then everything comes together and you know, it, it's gonna be good. Just trust me, okay? Trust me. Smash that thumbs up button if you like this video. Let me know what, what should we put in the tank next. Drop a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on so you can find out what happens with this nano tank and keep up to date with the reef tank. Plus, don't forget I got jellyfish. A video on that is coming soon. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Later. Maybe